All right, so we got Star Wars Outlaws wants to be a dream open galaxy. Start the video. Let's go. Man. Making is really tough. Making yeah. open world games is really, really tough. It and is. Making Star Wars open world games is the next level of difficulty. Yeah, because you're in space, Junior right? Reality, creative director at Massive Entertainment. Am I right? For, a challenge. for the first time ever, we're getting a fully open world Star Wars video game. It's been a long time coming, but after back to back successes with both The Division and The Division 2, Garrity was in the mood to take a risk. This All right. just my approach, but even if it's scary, you've got to do it. You've got of to course. lean into it. What's of course. Got to take the risk. A Star Wars game at Lucasfilm games. You gotta take the risk. George Lucas's old office. I mean, what's the downside to that? If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But you still have that experience. Fast forward there it is. years after that meeting, a massive entertainment is less than two months away from releasing. I like that though. Outlaws, They're going for it. I like that a lot. Version of the original pitch described in that office: an open world of dual ambitions. Oh, whoa, whoa. Maintain the cinematic legacy of the films and create immersive scoundrel gameplay that grants. Scoundrel. I haven't heard that word in 20 years. I think it's taken this long to get an open world star wars game because of how excuse the pun massive it is to build a game like this True. there are only so many studios in the world who build games of this scale the door is then open True. for massive to come to us and say this is what we're interested in doing this is the type of game design and gameplay we want this is what we're thinking about in terms of an architect Man. where does that fit? i hope they i hope the i hope they make it play a fancy and it's open world those were oh, the two an open world space game though the hold up open world because the outlaw fancy really needs that to live and breathe it's a combination of i think our is it going to be like open and like space on, right or think, no okay what what do we have a lot of experience doing what do we think we're good at and this fantasy the the scoundrel in in star wars begs for freedom. Massive was fully confident in its abilities to create engaging open worlds. The Division offered a bullet-filled action playground, while last year's Avatar Frontiers of Pandora displayed an ability to work well within a Disney license by building a near unmatched visual paradise. But Star they Wars did, Okay, I didn't know they were even behind Avatar. Avatar. Of course, deciding what kind of experience would live inside a Star Wars open world was the first thing that had to be decided. We took a step back, of course, and thought, okay, Star Wars open world, what an opportunity. Uh, what does that naturally want to be? And it wants to be the full scale from the very small to the very big, meaning sitting inside a cantina playing Sabak, being able to walk through what the What is Sabak? What is that? Speeder, drive across the planet's surface, park literally your bike in your own ship, take off into space seamlessly. That's that hard, though. That's, no, 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 that's honestly hard. A green light from Star Wars custodians. But getting Lucasfilm's blessing was just the key in the ignition. Translating the cinematic spectacle of the original Star Wars movie trilogy into an open world, set between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, two of the most iconic films of all time, was the actual challenge. One that Massive set out to address in every aspect of Outlaws, from the way it looks and sounds oh, to the type snap. of action-adventure gameplay it supplies. That, hey, that looks crazy. Make it an open world cinematic. Here we go. The sort of cinematic ambition that we had was in presentation. So that doesn't mean cinematics necessarily. Hey, I'm ready for the gameplay. I'm just be honest with you, bro. Interactive part, right? What we did was take a lot of inspiration from the original trilogy, but with today's technology. So oh my. very similar to what Rogue One did. What its aim was to do was oh my. to replicate a lot of the the sort of filmic effects of those lenses of the 1970s. So you'll see barrel distortion on the sides, oh. vignetting, film grain, chromatic aberration, and of course, all wrapped up in an ultra widescreen presentation. Okay, it's okay, okay. For open world games. So it's gonna have like a 70s uh, vibe to it, okay. Very much for Star Wars as well, and not always scale in that it needs to be Turn grand, it up a little bit. To be conscious. The scale of Tatooine, needs and should and does in our game feel very different. It breeds you know, open sand dunes, long sight lines. You see it's easy to pick up any little anomaly on the horizon. There might be an opportunity. For that looks kind of fun to, though. The fact that you can like ride through the sand dunes, that it looks fun. Scale is something written into oh, yeah, okay, the DNA fine. of Star Wars, whether seen on the big or small screen. Look at the Stormtrooper. Rogue One's director of photography recently told IGN that if you watch any Star Wars film, that's what it's all about. It's, you know, knowing how big a human is going into this massive 
Millennium Falcon. You know how big the Millennium Falcon is going to this massive Death Star. Like, Bro. you know, it's scale upon scale upon scale. It's a philosophy Geraghty and the team at Massive took into Outlaws when crafting the introduction to its open world. One of our intentions Man. was for the beginning of the game to make it feel very small and then bigger and bigger and bigger. Oh, and bigger. So okay, okay, okay. I get that. The game, I understand that. Off in one room and it's claustrophobic and it's meant to make you feel a little bit trapped very tight yeah you open up and then you open up like okay city streets okay but i like that contained i like that some narrative stuff and you steal a ship and you explode into the galaxy so and all so the sudden, openness is this like surprise of it planet, which is wide open world okay yeah that sort of sense of everything growing for you and not just the scale of the the galaxy but the the scale of the possibilities for you as a character as a rookie outlaw okay that's the underworld's favorite new scout. Oh my god! I, I didn't see that before! Oh my! A young scoundrel looking to build a scoundrel across the stars in order to pull off one big space heist and remove the death mark placed on her by the Zeric Besh. Oh yeah, crime she got a bounder on her head. Yeah, I remember that. It's a story that evokes many other adventures from across both games and film. I love Mass Effect 2. It was one of, is one of my favorite games. Oh, I think snap. there were so many influences, everything from Oceans 11. Ocean I never watched 8, that. Never watched Star that. Star Wars itself. I watched know, Star Wars. Never watched Oceans 8 like before. That heist feeling was always kind of in the fabric to just tonally films of Kurosawa. So like they, they took like a lot of inspiration from like uh, movies and Knowing stuff. Sort of I kind of like that. What story you want to tell is one thing. Telling an engaging story in an open world setting is another task altogether, and one that Kavari is well aware of, having written for Far Cry 4, 5, and 6, as well as The Division. Oh, his resume is tight. Things you always have to keep in mind is how are we going to weave a narrative and an open world together so that we're telling the story but also giving you the freedom to sort of go wherever you like. We had a really clear approach on Outlaws, which was there was Kay's journey. We called them sort of lighthouses. There were key points that we knew we want her to hit these, and then that makes her story kind of part of the wider Star Wars narrative. Mm, but between okay. those moments, we knew early on that if you got distracted by curiosity, the world had to react to that. It had to expect that the player is going to go off the beaten path. The things that lie off the beaten path are built in accordance to something Massive refers to as the three second rule. I kind of like that within weapon. within a few blinks of an eye, you can instantly understand the nature of a location or character and the story behind them. Before you even put life in them, they need to visually tell a story about what kind of place it is, what's happened in the past, what type of life and events have taken place in them. So they get that lived in feeling and that lived in relatable, substantial feel. I think it's a hallmark of any good open world, but also very Star Wars. Star Wars aesthetic mm. has always been rooted in the idea of the used future, where everything from the largest spaceships to the tiniest droids have that instantly recognizable layer of grime. Those small details build up into authentic, cool, and bespoke spaces. Something okay. massive has oh, always okay, yeah, they're going to allow into its open worlds. Okay. The Division and its sequel are packed full of memorable levels, ranging from New York landmarks to Washington DC museums. And that philosophy is being transferred to Outlaw's many planets. Okay. Its main missions promise to take us to iconic locations such as Imperial bases and Jabba's palace. We can lean into the virtual tourism. So this game is getting a lot of inspiration from games and old movies too. Okay. Not even just from Star Wars movies, but, but from like uh, just other uh, movies. Story, golden okay. path, if you will. And around that, of course, there's the open world. That's the the dream. Uh, I know I had as a kid. That is what I've always wanted from a Star Wars game. Is that you know, when I'm on a journey, when I'm entering into a quest, it might start on foot. They might start navigating a High Republic uh, cruiser that's crashed, but I want to be able to jump into my speeder and blast off, hop into the Trailblazer, take off into space, maybe land in a. Wait, we can act. Wait, wait, wait. Can we actually take off the, into space, or will there be like a loading screen? Journey along the way. And so that's. Sort we can of do that. Connective tissue of planet or moon to space was crucial because that's kind of the fantasy that I think players are hoping for. That fantasy and freedom is evidently at the core of Outlaws. And while all five planets and moons won't be instantly available to hyperdrive between, Geraghty claims it won't be long into Kay's journey until the galaxy opens up. There's a very structured oh. intro 
that leads you to crash land on Tashara, which is a moon that we created with Lucasfilm Games. And once you finish the, the sort of linear narrative on Tashara, yeah. the other planets open up. And there it becomes completely non-linear and you can choose to tackle those in any order. Wait, how big is the game? A galaxy of uh, exploration. Wait, how big is the game? This there's five moons and five planets. Wait, what? The exploration of these worlds is highly encouraged, with maps that are not, at least initially, flooded with icons and points of interest. Because okay. you're seeing these places from a fresh perspective. Okay. Kay, as a character, hasn't seen the galaxy. So the first time Kay comes to Tushara is the first time you come to Tushara. Oh, okay. It's not an unknown, uncharted place. So you'll have a map of where you can see uh, this, you know, mountains over there and stuff. But discovery is what gives you more information. You're gonna have mm. to take some risks. You're gonna have to go to a canteen. Oh, I'm taking all the risks. Drop, pick up on some conversations that will lead you to another location. Oh, so we're kind of like a spy too. A location within the Learn all types of secrets. On your speeder to go uh, and find. There will be a fog of war that you'll be able to clear up. And that's really where your curiosity will open things up even more. Each of Outlaw's worlds vary in size. Tashara, Massive's newly created moon, is around the same size as the jungle planet of Akiva, but a little smaller than the vast desert of Tatooine. It was less about how big, but more about how long in terms of traversal with the speeder, it would be four or five minutes nonstop, which okay. doesn't sound like a lot, but once you're committed, it's a fairly uh, large amount. And you're always going to be distracted. Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which was one of the, the games that we were looking at while creating this, you have different zones. So it's two or three of those together. And that doesn't but I think like a GTA map. Fast areas of space that surround each planet and serve as entirely different areas of orbital exploration and opportunity. Unity. We'll cover that as well as the Starship side of the game in greater depth later on in this month's IGN first. I said run. Oh yeah, I'm out of here. Oh in terms of mission design, we've seen action ranging from stealth infiltrations, frantic dogfights, high-speed chases, and- Bro, I can't wait for the space fights, bro. I can't lie to you. Some quests even evolving to include all these elements at different stages. Star Wars Outlaws is thus perhaps better thought of as a single-player narrative action adventure in the wrappings of an open world. Something more akin to Marvel's Spider-Man than dense RPGs like The Witcher or Ubisoft's recent Assassin's Creed games. Its mixture of popcorn action and blockbuster narrative ambition is a departure from massive yeah it's like a movie type of game okay yeah okay it's a new chapter in the oh wait look at those water physics wait a minute that started life as a real-time strategy developer i think if you look at the, the evolution of okay that explosion world, look crazy division one and division two there's a life a dynamism a systemic quality to division two that we didn't have in division one i'm not talking about the presentation the soft values at all i'm talking about pure gameplay experience, uh, single player or, or cooperative. That was very, very important to us to have as a living, breathing element that engages players while they're playing Outlaws. It's an evolution of what Massive has been doing in their games for years now, keeping worlds feeling bustling and alive, even when set against post-apocalyptic backdrops or in the midst of galactic wars. Uh -oh. In both the mission games, but especially in the second one, developed what we call living world systems. So same thing here. We have systems that make sure that the world is always alive with movement, traffic, you know, speeders. Uh, hey, bro, I can't wait to ride the speeder, bro. That speeder is going to be tough. You know, out there. Sometimes more substantial events happen. It's really up to you if you want to engage or not. Perhaps Outlaw's most interesting method of breathing life into its open world is its approach to character progression. There's no leveling up or incremental stat boost to drop experience points into. Instead, Kay's ability and equipment are linked to experts, people you'll meet across the galaxy who'll grant you upgrades in exchange for work. I heard you're really? on the planet. Oh, and you want to be second best. They are full on Wait, characters. so we gotta beat they somebody to get our to get our oh okay. exactly they have to offer you and how to reach them from the very beginning. So there's this journey of discovery here as well. So we get our abilities okay. from other people. I think there's a guy or gal or something. Okay, it's <laughs> fine. I mean, do good things to my speeder here, meaning these are really strong incentives for you to move around and journey through the world and expose yourself to other fun things on the way. And once you reach them, there's a character there to interact with in an adventure. Now, I've seen that character before right there. I've seen that character before. Oh, here you go. Right? And then they essentially open up a 
little regional progression for you where the nature of unlocking those things is also very tangible. For so, example, so after finding a Jawa by sourcing their location from overheard intel at a cantina, you can complete a mission for them in order to gain a new skill. In this yeah. case, it's to venture into a dead Sarlacc to find a pristine tooth from its second mouth, which you can then exchange for a laser turret for Kay's starship, the Trailblazer. It's a smart so, way of blending gameplay progression with narrative befitting. Yeah, I was saying, so they're forcing, they're literally forcing you to move around. Go on a they're forcing you to do it, okay. Such as, if you uh, want new skills. An expert stuff. who is going to teach K a new skill, a new give her a new upgrade, you know, to her blast. The gunslinger, skill, okay. That upgrade definitely ties into K pulling off the heist, but it's also very much its own journey, which is in the Star Wars tradition as well. Another system aiming to marry gameplay with narrative is how Outlaws tracks Kay's reputation with each of the criminal syndicates. Her bond with each of the Huts, Pikes, Crimson Dawn and Ashiga clan will strengthen or weaken depending on your choices in dialogue and mission objectives. Refuse to finish. finish. Oh, so we got choices too? Really? Oh, oh, got it. reputation moving in the positive direction unlocks a lot of things for you. Everything from actual access to territory that they control where you might have been able to I can't lie to you. Voice. If I'm that girl, I'm portraying everybody. <laughs> I'm getting my way. Traders affiliated with the syndicate, unique, really exotic rewards, etc., etc. But if you if you really get on their bad side, that's another thing that you will feel dynamically in the game because they actually send hit squads out for you in the open world. The reputation system doesn't Man, just Man, I cannot wait to go though. into space, Smaller bro. opportunities regularly present themselves <sighs> to boost your relationships among the syndicates. These might be smaller skirmishes where choosing to get involved can benefit you and the organization you side Oh, so with. I can get into the drama? I like that. And help you out with the bigger threat looming over the galaxy. This is getting bad. Oh, bro, that speeder looks tough, yeah, bro. Wanted, and you're being chased by Empire and you cross paths with a syndicate that you have a really good reputation with at the moment, they might join in and help you out. Outlaws oh. directly follows the events of the Empire Strikes Back and sees the Imperial forces at the peak of their powers. In gameplay terms, the Stormtroopers are basically like GTA's police and adopt a similar <laughs> wanted system. Find yourself in a restricted area or accidentally fire a stray laser bullet at a Stormtrooper uh -oh. and you'll quickly find yourself in hot Oh, that controller blinking. No blinking red and blue. When it comes to open world design, but one that is made all the more exciting thanks to a lick of Imperial black and white paint. It has a good range. Uh, of escalation and de-escalation what is this hey what is that weapon called with the, with the shield i like that weapon uh oh bribe an imperial officer that's a bit corrupt in the city so bribe 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 her. To a different space region but you will feel it listen i'm gonna be a villain in this game i can't lie to you i'm gonna be a bro i'm gonna be a, i'm gonna be a deviant in this game i can't lie to you bro balancing quality with quantity that's a good Beyond mix, the by the way. Missions, Very good mix. Side missions and the reputation system at the core of it all. Many other stackable activities exist in Outlaws Open World. These range from quick contracts such as smuggling and stealing, gambling in Sabak, to playing asteroid filled arcade shooter games and betting on Kanto Bites Favia Racing. All of these activities bolster your ever growing uh -oh. supply of credits. Ooh, you can be used ooh. to purchase new customization and gear options for Kay, her pet like alien companion Nyx, Aww. and the Trailblazer. What's his name, Nyx? There's more. Emergent events frequently take place throughout the open world, whether on land or in space. Every two, three minutes, there'll be something that's happening, whether it's an ambush or the Empire arresting some civilians or combat with uh, some criminal syndicates. And it's up to you whether you want to engage or not. So with so mm. much to do in Star Wars. You guys know I'm engaging in every one, right? Go about avoiding open world bloat. With a near endless galaxy of opportunity, there's the worry that things may spiral, feature creep sets in, and everything just gets too big. The studio had a clear plan from the start, though, leading with variety over size quality over okay. quantity if you will we don't okay. want things to be just big for a big sake we need it to be contained always fun always proposing different activities it's okay. about calibrating size to substance when you okay. see something that breaks pattern i like that i like that reason, i like that a lot you go in there and look there's something there to do and that bro look at this breakdown bro enough and that the quests the bespoke kind of content of the game makes use of it so that it doesn't feel like a separate experience but it it's all one. Of course, no matter how much there will be to do in Outlaws, one thing that can be expected is a healthy helping of nods to the larger Star Wars galaxy. Lando is set to make an appearance, and we've already seen a glimpse of Han Solo and Carbonite, but it sounds like they might just be the tip of the iceberg. There's Easter eggs 
there's characters that you'll meet along the way across the main quests and across there's Darth Vader or you know the wider Anakin you stumble across August 30th is a really great date I, I recommend uh, bookmarking it in your calendar August you guys, uh, listen, is right around the corner. You guys know we'll be there. For many players for whom an open you guys know we'll be there. You know us. Far away, you know us. You know we'll be there. Dream. I could feel a similar passion for Star Wars coming out of each person I spoke to at Massive. And for them, I can't help but get the sense that that dream is a shared one. Making open world games is tough, and bringing open world to Star Wars may well bring an extra level of difficulty. <sighs> but for Garrity and the team, it's been a challenge worth taking on. I'm not as young as you used to be, and I'm getting to that point where I think I can count the number of games I can do till I'm put out to pasture on, on one hand. And oh, okay. it becomes more and more important to me to choose what I do because it's really important for me to do quality work with people that I love working with. And, Makes uh, sense. Star Wars is definitely bucket list. So, where do we go next? All right. Anywhere we want. We'll have more exclusive All right. at Star Wars Outlaws for you throughout July. And for everything else, stick with IGN. Shout out to IGN. Shout out. All righty. All right, okay. All right, here's my take on this, right? And I know, you know, I couldn't really do uh, too much talking and that whole thing. This is why I waited until the end, you know, to start yapping and trapping and talking and my yapping. All right, so listen. Um, now, it looks like, it sounds like, like the whole open world thing was, I, I, wouldn't wanna, I, I, I don't want to say it's like their big bread and butter because I think their bread and butter is, the, uh, is like the actual story itself. But to be honest with you, we never really had a like an open world, you know, Star Wars game like that. So it sounds like again, we ha we don't we haven't seen any gameplay or nothing like that. But it sounds like we might have our first open world. This is what they said. We might have our first open world uh, Star Wars game where we get to go and um and, and just travel like around the world on a planet, and then we get to leave the planet and have these like galactic fights and have these space fights and stuff like that. To be honest with you, that sounds. That sounds like Star Wars, to be honest. That sounds like, like, like the definition of Star Wars. Um, and if I'm being honest with you, I, I you know, I'm digging it. I kind of like it a lot. Um, my thing is, right, whenever it, whenever it comes to like open world, I think, especially for Star Wars, like, like, like open world is such like a, it's so, like, not every game can have open world. You know why? Because like games like, um, games like GTA, games like. Um, Red Dead Redemption. I'm okay. Well, that's a part of Rockstar. Games like uh, what, what's another open world game? Like, there's not really uh, like there's there's open world games, but like I'm gonna be honest with you, the only one that comes up like that that comes up like in my head like first was GTA. I've been playing GTA for like like ten plus years ever since I was young. Now, I mean, is that a good thing? Yes. I mean, well, I mean, I didn't you know I didn't grow up to be like some type of felon, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I definitely, you know, shouldn't have been playing it, you know, when I was like 10 years old. But you know what? I'm good now. So let's just say I I'm great. But um, I think the one thing that excites me about open world games is um, obviously like everything you can do. You can do, you, bro, you're, it's the freedom. I think that's the, it's the freedom that comes with open world. You can do whatever you want. You can just drive around. Like that's the thing. I, I think for me, for GTA 5, for example, right? Um, one, like one of the, like the most like fun things that I love to do in GTA five is just drive around, bro. It's little, it's like legit in real life. I, I put music in my ear, right. And I just drive around in, in like a fast car, whatever. I'm going on the highway. Uh, I'm just, I'm just driving around the map. I, I bro, sometimes I like hop on like Polito Bay and drive that, that one long road or whatever. Like, bro, like that's like legit. That's what I do sometimes, you know, just like calm down at the end of the day. Um, like after I'm done with videos, whatever, and I'm um, obviously I haven't did that in a long time, but like I used to legit just like put headphones in my ears, bro, and just drive around because of like it was like an open world game. Like I didn't have to like you know do a mission or whatever. I didn't have to focus on a mission. I was just like put headphones on and just drive, like you know. And, and at the end of the day, that was like one of the most fun things in GTA for me. So to uh, to hear them say like like legit, bro, I can legit hop on a speeder. Is like you know again. This is an open galaxy. This is an open world thing that they that they just said. I can legit just hop on a speeder, bro, and just drive around like the sand dunes, bro. I I can do that. That's that's what they said. I could I could legit do that. So basically, um, 
That sounds like that sound pretty much like open world to me. Now I don't know if they mentioned how many like moons and how many planets that's going to be in the game. I think they said five. Uh, if I'm wrong, you know, then please somebody please correct me. But if I'm right, I'm right. Um, but man, I'm I'm pretty excited about the game. I'm actually pretty excited about the story. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, the open world, I am excited about that. I mean, I wasn't really like worried about that, you know, at the beginning. But um, like you know, this game being open world, I literally just heard about this. I didn't even know that this game was open world because um, it usually in like Star Wars games, you know, you usually gets like a like a limit where there's like an invisible wall and like you can't go further, or whatever. Uh, but turns out it looks like you can like explore like you know more of like the moons and more of the world and stuff like that. Um, you can like you know you can just hop in a ship, go to space, and just uh, just just fly around in space and and stuff like that. So it it, it seems very outlaw ish. Uh, you know, not to put a pun in there, but uh, but to be honest with you, I, I, hey, I'm digging it so far. I just want to see some gameplay. Um, I think the last time I actually did react to a Star Wars uh, Outlaws uh, gameplay, I think um, I did say that that the shooting looked a little funny. Um, maybe it's because I never really um, I never really like dealt with shooting like that before. Like the way she was shooting, um, it, it looked a little funny, but it is what it is. I think they're gonna fix it around. Um, I mean, but maybe it looked funny to me and maybe it was okay to everybody else. And, and, and if that was the case, you know what? I'll just have to deal with it. I'm not going to like, you make a whole video about, oh my God, the shooting in this game is horrible. Like, I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to do that. But, um, comment down below, man. What do you guys think about, uh, everything they said in this 21 minute video? Um, uh, definitely digging it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. See you guys later. Peace out. And.